he will have a shot, it appears, at the heavyweight title. The undefeated heavyweight has signed to fight in the HBO title unification series, and he'll face Trevor Burbick, the WBC title holder, probably sometime this fall. And if Tyson should beat Burbick, he would become the youngest man in history ever to win the heavyweight championship. Bur Burbick was the last person to fight Ali, and he hurt Ali very bad. When you fought him, was there any revenge? A hundred percent, yes, no doubt about it. Mm. That's all I can't wait to get him. Him and Larry Holmes. The fight brought out all the A-listers and Tony Danza. I laugh at Tony Danza. And I'm super creepy, Rob Lowe. In the morning, I'm making waffles. I am the greatest. So now the moment of truth is not far off. This will be the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. He could go into the record books tonight if he can capture the title from the reigning champ, Trevor Burbank. This is what Mike Tyson has trained his whole life for. This is what Customano and Jimmy Jacobs trained this man for. I believe he will be the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. And if he remains dedicated, interested, and without any distractions, I believe that eventually you'll go down in history as the greatest heavyweight champion ever. Because you're always talking about the situation, you're saying, you know, if you really took a deep interest in it, you would be champ of the world. And if there was no problem, you'd be champ. There is electricity in the crowd. I've got goosebumps on the line. The WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. It would have been, it would have, it would have happened to any fighter because at this particular point I was throwing, I, what can I say, hydrogen bombs. Every punch was with murderous intentions. You talk about being on the stage on a moment and capturing that moment. Position, not using the jab of the villains. Round one, a good round one for Mike Tyson. Seven, seven, coming in. Okay. This is round two. The WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Trevor Burbick and Mike Tyson. That was the coming out. And that was the star going on Broadway and saying, I am a star. Look at me. And he's down. He'll have to take the standing eight count as he steps right up the count to four. And he five. absolutely destroyed him. He knocked him all over the ring. It was over in two rounds. And at that time, you thought, this guy is going to be the champion for a decade or more. Tyson seized the title in spectacular fashion. He goes down. He should be able to get up from this. His legs may be shut. They are as Trevor Burbick falls back in the road. Mike is a boy prodigy. He's 20 years old. He is uh, quite an incredible force in the heavyweight division, but he's just a boy. In a devastating second round knockdown, Mike Tyson, age 20, became the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history. His managers, cornermen, and friends ran to congratulate him. Tyson kissed Jim Jacobs. Jimmy Jacobs in there. Bill Caton also worked with him. At 20, he was the youngest heavyweight champion in history. If it wasn't for Cuss, this would never this would never happen. The idea I'm the youngest champ in the world. The idea that it'll live forever. The record I think will never be broken. And it's what I can say. He's probably up, up, up there right now saying, you did a lot of mistakes. You did a lot of mistakes. A Walcott said before this fight, if I can't beat this bum, take my name off the record books. September 1952, Philadelphia. Experts rate the Walcott fight as one of the most exciting bouts in ring history. For the heavyweight championship of the world, weighing 186 pounds, the challenger, Rocky Marciano. Weighing 196 pounds, the heavyweight champion, Jersey Joe Walcott. They call Rocky the Brockton Blockbuster, and some of the fight experts say he's another Jack Dempsey. Jersey Joe dominated the early action. 
smashing Marciano with relentless combinations. Rocky Marciano was one of the uh, toughest men ever to fight. Many fighters fold when they're first tested, when they're cut and dropped. Rocky grew tougher. But he was one tough guy. He was 189 pounds. It was the first knockdown of Rocky's career. Marciano is now cut on the floor. The way he came back and the way he fought people. First time that Marciano ever had been put on the canvas, took a five and came up, and from that time on, they have fought steadily and hard. But he liked it. He went beyond courage, and, to, and did he truly liked it. He liked the sport, he liked getting hit, and he liked hitting. Absorbing Walcott's best shots, eating punches that ended other fighters. The consensus at this point was Rocky's got to knock him out to win. All the officials voted for Walcott this round. Twisted Walcott's face into pudding. Relentless attack. And now we're in round 13. At this stage, Jersey Joe Walcott is leading on all three scorecards. Seven rounds to five. Rocky Marciano has to knock out Jersey Joe Walcott to win this fight, and his corner has told him so. And he had a punch from hell called the Susie Q. It was his right hand. One destructive blow changed the course of heavyweight history. Rocky feigned a left then delivered a sledgehammer right. The Suzy Q. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and out! New heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano has come from almost certain defeat to knock out Joe Walcott. And the new heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. When it ended, fight fans had witnessed one of the greatest slugfests in history. The Brockton blockbuster was now the heavyweight champion of the world. I hit him with plenty of good punches, and uh, he took them very good. Rolled with most of them. He's a very smart fighter, a very great champion. I only hope that I could be as good as him. By 1980, the boxing world had two welterweight title holders, Thomas the Hitman Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. Tommy Hearns, uh, he was 6'3", 6'4", some say 6'5". I mean, he's tall, no question about it. Long arms, uh, speed, and power. The fight between Thomas Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard, number one, was an emotional fight that was probably, uh, at that time, the biggest fight in history. Rarely these days do the best fighters fight one another in their primes. Good evening and a very warm welcome to International Sports Special, which highlights a significant milestone in the history of boxing, the richest fight ever staged, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Tommy Hearns for the undisputed welterweight championship of the world. The best versus the best. No fight since the Ali Frazier confrontation 10 years ago has created such a furore there. Now it's going to be the richest fight in boxing history. So the WBC welterweight champion Sugar Ray Leonard has entered the ring. Okay. This was everything boxing fans dream of. Hearns loading up, looking to dynamite the opponent. He's now given a gift of two rounds to Tommy Hearns. But Hearns is back at him. Hearns jab is bothering Leonard. There's no question about it. A back and forth affair between two of the greatest to ever do it. Leonard taking a beating here. To do it by waving the right hand that way. Yeah, this is not Roberto Duran. Hearns is mimicking him now. Hearns is laughing at him. Hearns is making fun of Sugar Ray Leonard like Leonard made fun of Duran. There's the bell. Burns, calm, cool, collected, is making a chopping block of Leonard now. Burns may have been hurt. Burns, he may have wobbled and maybe he did. The fight was one of the greatest in history. Fought in the legendary fights with the likes of Sugar Ray Leonard.
the Sugar Ray on the other end of a shutout over the first five, coming back strong. Tommy Hearns is the ultimate warrior. Never will ever be, there never has been a dull Tommy Hearns fight. It's the first time we have ever seen Thomas in trouble. At this point, the conditioning of Sugar Ray Leonard has to be a major factor. But it's a question how long a man can carry his punch, Marty. Can he carry it into the 13th round, 12th round, 14th round? At the end of the 12th round, Hearns had boxed his way back to a significant lead on all three judges' scorecards. Trailing on the scorecards late, Sugar Ray showed why he is one of the sport's greatest champions. You're blowing it now, son. You're blowing it. My eye was like a slit. I had no peripheral vision. You're blowing it now, son. Thomas had totally just ran like he had enough petrol to get you from one city to another, but not enough to go any further. And, you know, unfortunately, it was a 15-round fight, not a 12-round fight. I think Leonard has to fight a desperate fight. Good right hand. That we oh, was hurt again. Hurt was hurt. He's trying to hold on. were scared, handlers were scared, the only person that didn't appear scared of Foreman was Ali. I don't prove to the world that I'm still the fastest, the prettiest, the most classiest, the most scientific, the greatest fighter of all time. Everybody was scared but Muhammad Ali himself. Have you fought many guys who were talkers in the ring? No, I never get a chance to talk much. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you get to know a fella, it's all over. As for the fight itself, discussion centered not on who would win, but on how much punishment Foreman would dish out. The time may have come to say goodbye to Muhammad Ali. And now we understand that George Foreman is about to make his way to the ring. Because very honestly, I don't think he can beat George Foreman. Cosell was convinced that Ali is washed up. This guy was the closest thing to a human monster I, I'd ever seen before. He was certainly the scariest boxer. Look at this now as they stare. Muhammad Ali beginning to talk to George Foreman. They're really putting a stare on each other. I looked him in the eye to stare him down and said, Oh, George, you were in school when I was beating Sonny Lister. Gone in the past four years beyond two rounds in any fight. George he knew that the one weakness in, in this monster who was thought of as unbeatable was his stamina. The first round, all of us yelled out, get off the rope. And he would just say, shut up, I know what I'm doing. I 
would say that the, the round was very even for that scene. And Ali totally got into the guy's head, and he didn't even realize it. It was Muhammad Ali's fertile mind that created the rope. Here we go, round number two, the determined Ali got off his stool in between rounds. George Foreman sat down all the way. Ali leaned on the rope with the vicinity of Cardigan. Starting second or third round, when he went to the ropes, he was calling Foreman all kinds of names. Any name of ugliness you can think of. He bought just like a, your initial bombs, just lay on the rope and take it with it. This time, he did it with character. He said, hey, I'm going to weather this stone. The rope of dope uh, was something that was invented by Muhammad Ali that night. I must say, I don't understand those tactics, Joe, of staying on the ropes and letting him hit. It just him. shows you the power of intellect and intelligence and how that can compete against anything. And believe me, I was a big, powerful giant in the ring with Muhammad. I mean, a knockout on him. He stood up to me. Foreman setting him up against the rope. What a... So young, so strong. Not supposed to do, leaning up against the ropes. Four punches downstairs on Ali. So fearless. I had him beat, I really did. And really thought I had him beat up in the body, had him tired. Continues to talk, continues. Against George Foreman, he does away with his opponents, one after another, in less than three rounds. George not going that type of distance a long time. He was treading in water, you know, never been in before. This is the furthest that George Foreman has gone in a fight since 1972. Misses the right hand. Ali is definitely confusing him. Missing the shots that he missed, it drained him. Look at Foreman's face, he does look tired. Nobody knew the strength of Muhammad Ali. He was manhandling him, just like Archie said, grabbing him, and he emptied the guy's tank. I was afraid he was going to get killed by a George Foreman that many of our young viewers don't know. Boom, perfect timing. I thought he was hurt, I thought his body was hurt. He came back, he hit Foreman with everything, and he winked at me. Oh, yes, there's no doubt about it. He winked right over here to this corner. You know, the guy really was the people's choice, and he was the people's choice because he loved them. Yes, I'd hate to predict it any fight, but my goodness, those people who said Foreman would win in a flash have certainly been proved wrong. And about this. That was round, he asked me, that all you got, George? That, that was like a nightmare. After a while, even the dumbest of us looked up there and said, you know what, he's winning. heavyweight who ever lived. I am the greatest. George, you've thrilled us. You've been great. You've inspired us. You've entertained us. But now, please, isn't it time to go back to the old fishing hole before you seriously get hurt? A few days after Michael Mora beat Evander Holyfield, I got a call from George. And I said, George, you can't kid me. You want to fight Michael Mora. And he said more than anything else in the world. When Michael Moore defeated Holyfield to become the new champion, George Foreman, at age 45, would get one final shot. I knew what Teddy told me, like, this one, he's a big con. And I just look at him like, go get me a sandwich and sit down. Man, you're so fake. Featuring the clown king of the sport, the larger-than-life George Foreman. Well, there are a lot of skeptics out there who think that George now is more King Con than King Kong. But George hasn't earned this a championship shot as a fighter. He hasn't fought in a year and a half, and on that inauspicious occasion, 
he lost to Tommy Morrison. Uh, with, uh, with the fighter that he's fighting, he's going to have to punch and punch and try to club him and just keep beating him. But I don't think that's going to happen. So you see no chance that George can win the fight? Very little. Very little. Foreman looked to become the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history. But despite the optimism of the crowd, few gave Foreman more than a puncher's chance. Middle-aged men don't knock out 25-year-old heavyweight champions. He would be the oldest to win the heavyweight title by a huge margin over Wolfett, who was 37, when he beat Ezra Charles. I always thought if the George Foreman from the Rumble in the Jungle had the brain of the George Foreman who fought Michael Moore, yes, that's the greatest uh, fighter ever. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! I'm the boss man in here. Take your hands below. George, how are you going to find him? You got to fought in a long time. He moves in there. He goes at a different angle. He's a southpaw. He, you know, he wouldn't stand still for Holyfield. Why would he stand still for you? And George said, you watch. Somewhere late in the fight, he's going to come stand in front. And in the press, the feeling was that Mike would be too sharp, too fast, too young. And Big George, too slow and too big and too old. This colossus of heavyweight boxing. A man with a foot in several decades. If people over the last two or three months think this fight shouldn't take place, think that George has proven himself in danger of real and serious injury. The shadow of Ali loomed large over the career and legacy of Foreman. The five races are against him, the planets are against him, but already he lost the first five rounds. Michael Moore will go back to Teddy Atlas. Big George will lumber back slightly slower. The hardest part of the fight is over. Now you know it's not make believe anymore. Teddy Except Atlas telling him our spawn partners were better. The hardest part of the fight is over. You know what he's made of. Our sparring partners were better. We're round eight. Foreman's trailing, losing, but not out of the fight. Get all you got, George. It's a fantastic short left cross from Moore, a young footed and sent Foreman stumbling. George Foreman had never openly sought specific redemption for his demise against Ali and Zaire, but it's revealing that he chose to wear the same trunks on this night that he had worn in the jungle 20 years before. George Foreman in the shorts he wore that night in Zaire, the rumble in the jungle, when he lost his world heavyweight title. I told you! I told you! I'm the champion of the world! but he always saw the ghost of a Muhammad Ali. And Everybody has felt all along that you're always chasing the ghost of Ali. Does this make you catch that ghost? I'm the greatest. You know how many business in the ring with me. That's it! It's a short right hand! There is no way he's gonna knock from that! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Chasing the ghost of Ali. Does this make you catch that ghost? Yeah, I've exercised a ghost once and forever. Sure. Come to the point where we'd like to have you, our panel, come up with the best of the best. Select the greatest round of all time. Hot and heavy, Hearns Hagler. Hagler Hearns. Hagler and Hearns. Those two guys, I didn't think the fight was going to go past that one round. And so the super fight between Hearns and Hagler was set. Confident Thomas Hearns would move up to the 160 pound weight class. And the long awaited showdown was set. Keep that belt by your bed because um, it'll be the last time you see it. Can't hear you. Pull a little baseball cap on. War across the top. You knew, and I think Thomas Hearns knew that it was about war with with Hagler. Uh, great fight. Some of, the, some of the greatest fights of all time, if not the greatest, some people still argue the Hearns fight. By the mid-1980s, marvelous Marvin Hagler had taken on all comers. After 11 title defenses over five years, he stood alone. It was no secret each man had little love for the other. This fight was everything for both of their legacies. Two warriors of historic renown. 
Well, it's been voted certainly the greatest round ever, that first round when they went at each other like alley cats. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. A lot of speculation coming into this fight, and they just went at it. Nobody could take Hearns' punches. It was later revealed Thomas Hearns broke his right hand during the first round. And for the eight minutes of mayhem is what it's often referred to. It's an incredible fight. Bang! Boom! Come on, man! Bang, Barbara! Oh, Hearns may have hurt him with the right hand! Possibly the most memorable fight in 30 years of boxing on HBO. So is Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler, but Hearns didn't click. There's blood all over Marvin Hagler's face. Can't tell where it's coming from. They, they're going to war. These are two of the best middleweights ever, and they're standing in front of each other going to war. Working on it, but Hearns uppercutting again. Great first round. Wow. Incredible. Perhaps one of the best in middleweight history. I mean, there's a famous quote that, again, Goody Petronelli told us. He said that when he was in the corner, Hagler said to him, whatever happens tonight, don't stop this fight. I'm prepared to die in the ring. Round two now. Oh! The club, left hand by Hagler. Hearns decided to stand right in front of Hagler, and Hagler decided to stand right in front of Hearns. As you say, though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Well, he turns right. He, he wants it to be a street stand fight. stand toe to toe and see who's the bigger man. Oh my God, everyone's gonna die. Excuse me, Al. Hagler turns righty. I think this could be a key moment in this fight. For the first time, Hagler switching. War. War! Crazy, right? Oh, it was amazing. Nothing fancy. Once it starts, bullets are flying. He has Hearns in trouble on the rope. Tommy trying to pump his way off the rope. Hagler wants to keep him there. Goes to the body. Arguably the most action-packed three rounds of boxing in history. Dubbed by boxing fans as The War. R.I.P. to the Marvelous One. The punching stats told a tale of utter domination. Mayweather landed 59% of his punches. I haven't saw Marquez land. I about two or three clean punches in the entire fight. Marquez landed only 12%. Shutting everything down. He just became this defensive wizard. I said earlier it's like two cobras squaring off. So far it's been more like a cobra and his prey. Cobra! Attack! He is the king of serpents. Brilliant combination by Mayweather. Super. about the selection of Marquez as the opponent. It seems that... The thing is this, I'm gonna do the talk because you do too much talking. The thing is this. All right, no, 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 Jim. No, 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 let, me, let me do the talking then. Jim. Okay then. I will. Mayweather would square off against unbeaten champion Canelo Alvarez. I have been in a lot of arenas since the 1980s for big fights. Few have been as electric as this one. Watch him fight, the guy is defensively spectacular yeah and when you watch him stand in front of Canelo Canelo th throws a left he's over mm -hmm. here he throws a right he's over here pop if you could have a superpower what would it be I think of him as the nightcrawler like you know he's just teleporting around you nightcrawler just, from the X-Men yeah, X -Men. <laughs> this dude picks you apart 
happens. Yeah. Show, he just like shows up suddenly right next yeah. to you. Right? Oh, it's he disappears and shows up right next to you. And by the way, he must have some kind of power. Because no one walks through him to get him. Whatever it is that he's doing, he embarrasses dude. Mayweather remains money in Las Vegas. In favor of the winner of the Super Welterweight Championship of the World. After 12 rounds, Floyd was the obvious victor. Mayweather grossed a record $40 million for the fight. All the press is there and there. Joe, you're the champion of the world. Not yet. Not till I beat that man. He didn't even have to say his name. That man was Max Schmeling. Joe refused to call himself a champion until he avenged his only defeat. Joe Lewis defends his World Heavyweight Championship against former title holder Max Schmeling, the only man who has ever defeated the champion. Lewis secluded himself into training. He knew, as did everyone else, that this fight was the most important of his life. Viewed as a battle of nations, politics, ideas. Boxing is war individualized. Pitting man against man. The heavyweight championship, its meaning was transcending pure supremacy in the ring. Its meaning was really that of a world beater. German troops marched into Austria for what the Germans called the reunification of the two countries. Everybody recognized what smelling represented. The stage is set for their historic rematch. The match had become more than sport. War was coming. On the verge of World War II, with Hitler, a madman, trying to create a master race, take over the world. I mean, the whole world's watching. You talk about pressure, that's why Lewis is the greatest. Yankee Stadium, New York City. If he didn't win this world title fight against Max Schmeling, he was ruined. And it's in Yankee Stadium outdoors. I mean, you talk about Huh, a setting? A stage? The eyes of the world would watch the clash. The gate was the biggest ever for a boxing match. The whole freaking world's watching. The President of the United States it calls up Lewis and says, you got a witness for the good guys. I mean, you talk about pressure. A black fighter carried the hopes of the free world. The famous Detroit Brown Bomber, world's heavyweight champion, Joe Lewis. The largest audience in the history for a single radio broadcast tuned in. U.S. against Germany, black guy against a white guy. You couldn't draw more divisive lines at those times. It was a watershed moment that transcended sport. That, that he's got to save the basically the United States and the world from scourge and, and, and disease of the Nazi party. For one night, Joe Lewis had united the free world under a single cause. A crushing right explodes off Schmeling's jaw. Joe steps back. And Schmeling was in fear right from the beginning. He realized that this is something else, a different cut of cat. How does he respond to it? He destroys him, he annihilates him. He knocks him out in one round. A left up to the jaw, and Schmeling is down. The count is five. That to me is one of the best stories of a heavyweight fight. Schmeling fell victim to the Brown Bombers Blitzkrieg. The boxing world with its magnificent first round devastating knockout over and still champion Lewis's victory electrified the country. And Joe Lewis and Benny Leonard, they were fighters. They let people know they had value, that their race had value, their people had value. 
They had value. They pulled people out of those places. I think that's the greatest single event in the history of the world. He began his historic run of 25 straight title defenses, 22 by way of knockout. For 25 years, he had it all. But this is to be the last time he will walk down the aisle to get into the ring in boxing trunks and robe. More than the greatest boxer of all time, he was the idol whose every move in and out of the ring showed what black pride really meant. Smacking right hand landed by Sugar Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson becomes the new welterweight champion of the world. To date, Sugar Ray has had 112 professional fights. He has won 111. Well, there it is. One of the greatest fighters of all time, likely the greatest fighter of all time, and one of the greatest punches of all time. I believe that I was blessed with a talent. That the talent that I had for fighting was not of my own. I believe it was a God-given talent. Pound for pound, the best boxer ever to enter the ring. The International Boxing Club has finally put together the match that the American public has been seeing through its crystal ball for many years. A so-called dream match. There goes his mouthpiece, and Graziano hits the canvas. Two, three. But in his sadness, he might reflect that he was beaten by a man who has lost only twice in 136 fights in a brilliant career. Called by many over and over again, the finest fighting machine of our time, pound for pound. Sugar Ray Robinson, middleweight champion of the world. Boxers tend to be reluctant to stop. It is my time. This is one time and still champion by tomorrow night. Manny Pacquiao ain't doing nothing to me, baby. Keep Dermot talking about you're going to crucify him and stuff yeah. like that. And he just Ooh, like, don't say that. I mean, I know he likes to quote Bible verses, so I'll let you know he's getting crucified. And he said certain things like, I'm going to send Manny Pacquiao to retirement. I'm going to knock Manny Pacquiao out. I'm going to crucify Manny Pacquiao. Oh, his family felt it. Oh, when I said I'm going to crucify the man, who they said, who? Ah, it's almost as if they had a crown of thorns on them themselves. They felt it. Please welcome the longest current reigning welterweight champion, the hard-hitting, acclaimed, and undefeated WBA welterweight champion of the world. Introducing uh, Keith, one time Thurman. Thurman vowed to retire the Pac-Man. To destroy his legacy. Nowhere is the anticipation for the big fight higher than Pacquiao's own hometown and home country of the Philippines. It didn't take long for Manny to remind Thurman who he was. Oh, that goes Thurman! And let me tell you, that was just a quick punch. I would love to be the man that destroys Manny Pacquiao. His legacy is often compared to the greatest, Muhammad Ali. And here we see the Ali shuffle. Both men used their incredible gifts to build up and give hope to those who felt hopeless. For 
them, every time Manny steps into the ring, it means more roads, hospitals, parks, schools. A professional career that began in January of 1995 when Keith Thurman was six years Even old. In his 24th year as a professional, he's 40 years old. What did we witness tonight again against the guy who was previously undefeated? In the literal fight of his life, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao is undefeated. While it was his iron will that made him famous, it is his heart that makes him a legend. Good right uppercut by Manny. Oh, and a great right hand by Thurman. Time winding down here in round seven. See, what Pacquiao's doing right now is giving him different angles. Seeing him beat Keith Thurman at 40 years old, like, damn, this guy's great. Pacquiao defeated Thurman to become the oldest welterweight champion in boxing history. In favor of the winner, boxing's pride to the Philippines, the ageless wonder, the one and only current WBA welterweight champion of the world. Okay, do you think one day you might be president? It's hard to, to have a comment right now because it's that far away. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it so.